Hello and welcome to Let's Play Empire Earth 2 with your host as always, Madrybred. Uh, for those of you who don't know this game, this is a very, uh, interesting RTS that was kind of overlooked. I don't think a whole lot of people have played this game before. It really branched out from the other things at the time, but, uh, in a lot of ways, some of them worked, some of them didn't. I would say that this game is very fun, but very unpolished. Uh, I'll show you what I mean in the first stage here. We're going to be going through the campaign for this Let's Play, where there's the Korean campaign, which is cool to see a Korean team, actually, in an RTS for once, then the German one, then the American one, then there's turning points where you can select from two different scenarios which team to be on. Uh, I'll be going through all of these in the Let's Play. But before we get into it, the basic concepts of the game that make it different from a lot of RTSs are that you go through the ages all the way from basically the Stone Age all the way to the future. Uh, and it can be all the way, it can be through the course of a single match even. So you're advancing in technology constantly. It has less of a focus on one small skirmish and more of a grand war, possibly even an entire country against another country. Although, as you'll see in this campaign, it could just be a small settlement fighting amongst bandits or something like that. It has a lot of interesting concepts with uh, citizen management and whatnot, but I guess I'll just jump right into this and show you. So, let's uh, start new game. Early Korea is characterized by small villages and nomadic tribes spread across the peninsula. Emerging from these isolated groups are large, socially complex city-states. Tangun leads his people to establish their first city of Asadol, now Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea, by the way. The first step is creating the basic infrastructure for the citizens of the new city and harvesting resources to supply needed materials. But there are groups of bandits that roam the countryside. In addition to food and shelter, Asadol must provide the means to defend itself. The bandit threat must be eliminated so Tan Gun's people may safely expand their community. Once the lands are safe, the basic needs of people have been met, Tan Gun can seek out other settlements in order to consolidate cultural identity, military strength, and economic prosperity. It is from these humble beginnings that the nation of Korea will eventually emerge. And, uh, let's, I guess we'll just jump right into this. A leader has emerged from among the nomadic Korean tribes. Dongun is driven to unite Korea, but bandits stand in his way. Dangun must pacify the countryside and found his capital, a saddle. All right. Uh, the first thing you need to know about this is this mission is incredibly unfriendly to new players. Uh, it immediately is going to rush us with these series of scenarios that we cannot anticipate are going to happen, and if you don't prepare for them before they happen, you're basically screwed. I know it's completely ridiculous, but that's kind of how it works. So, all you need to know is if you're playing at home, immediately get the city center adjacent to both the forest and the apple tree and stockpile food. I'll show you guys what I mean. What is it? Also, the hotkeys in this game are atrocious. Totally. Like, for instance, to attack and move, in just about any RTS, it's the A button. In this, it's Shift E. Basically, every hotkey that's not a unit or a building is incredibly awkward and usually uses either Alt or Control. I can see control, you use control a lot in RTSs. When the hell do you ever use alt? I understand. Okay, looks like a good site for a city. I want you to A move up there because that's a good place to defend. Hit C for city center and build it right there. What is it? Hotkey that up as my army. As soon as they're done building that, which will be fast because it's six people, have them fill up the apple tree. You can't have more than six guys on an apple tree. And the apple tree must be pretty goddamn big because it never runs out of, uh, never runs out of apples. Also, you start with one tech you can get, don't spend it right away. Because if you save those tech points for once you've built either a warehouse or a barracks, you can get much better upgrades. Certainly. 
Now, as I said before, you can progress through the ages in this game. You can't progress through the ages in this stage. There's only Stone Age. There are 15 ages in the game, but you're stuck at the first stage in this one. So for tech, it's just solely for upgrades, which are important, mind you. So I got to scout it right away, click X on him, so he's going to start scouting the lands. And we need to stockpile food. It looks like we've already got enough, but uh, we're going to keep getting more because we are going to be needing to feed an army. First warrior, or first worker rather, who comes out, we're going to want to build a barracks with. Probably two barracks, because we want to get archers very quickly. Of course. So I'll have him queue up two barracks there. Have them hotkeyed. And have the waypoint right up there. Since this is, this is the Stone Age, the only resources we really need an abundance of are food, wood, and stone. And stone is all the way down there, so we'll need to get a lot of wood for a storehouse over there. Which means our next highest priority for resource is wood. So we need a lot of workers on that. We're already good for food. You can see there is a uh, neutral team over here, the Kunsan Village. We're going to be talking to them soon. And one of those events I told you about that the game, you can't really anticipate, but you have to know it's coming. So you can't really win on your first try. Also, you see these borders here? Those are bor These are province borders. Uh, which means... Oh, got my first barracks, which means... Uh, not macemen. Macemen are not particularly useful here. As soon as I have the wood, I want to start making bowmen. Also, I want this upgrade. Makes it so it's a little bit cheaper, and you can get bowmen a little bit quicker. Which is very important since we're going to be spamming bowmen. Macemen are not over overly useful here. They're mostly good against uh, light mounted and light artillery. Okay, the game pauses whenever this happens. Uh, the Kunsan village is asking for a tribute of 400 food, and they will join us. You need to have that food right away. It's quite important, so let's just give them the food. And the reason you need so much food is because you do have to pay 35% extra in tribute tax. So you're actually giving up 540 food, and that's quite a bit. So give it to them immediately. They'll be thankful, and they'll offer you a, tra a uh, peace treaty, where they give full border permission and line of sight. Except, of course, they're now our allies. We're united against the bandits. Also, I want one person on stone, even though it's a ridiculous travel time. We'll be needing to build a, war a warehouse over there. Right now, food is- or, or wood, rather, is a high, high priority. What can I do? Said, also, I don't like that you can't queue up units before the uh, building is finished. Yes. Here we go. Yes. We have two buildings, mass-producing bowmen. And we also I want understand. our army up here waiting, because soon that wall's gonna fall, and there's gonna be a bandit attack that we've gotta be ready for. Because we don't want our partners getting wiped out here. Yep. They're coming. Certainly. The wall just falls down, here I they understand. come. Now, our army is not nearly tough enough to take them on. We're kind of banking on our allies backing us up. I kind of want them taking the brunt of the damage. We can't let their temple fall, and we can't let their city center fall. Here, as you wish. So this is quite difficult Certainly. early on. I understand. So the trick is really let your allies engage in the fight first so they're distracted. So the enemies are distracted, is that it? is. Also, you want your macemen focusing down the artillery first. Because that's what they're good against, and the artillery is the biggest threat. The archers just have them attack whatever. Okay, all of the artillery is down, which means we have an advantage, because our allies still have their artillery, which are these basic stone throwers. Again, I don't expect my army to survive, I just expect uh, the leader to survive, because he it's actually necessary he survives. He, uh, he dies. If he dies, or rather, if he dies, uh, it? it's game over. So we're actually gonna pull him out of this fight, because he's quite hurt now. I understand. Certainly. We're gonna have them come up while I upgrade them to veterans. I want them helping with this fight. As you can see, this is a lot easier now that we took out the artillery early on, but there are still a lot of bowmen left. Luckily, I don't believe they get reinforced. What is it? It's just those are the troops that are there. 
and there aren't going to be any more. Like, more troops will come eventually, but they aren't going to attack this village. So attack and move. Yeah, we've got them outnumbered now between us and our ally. Successful. Now go destroy their city center. Our goal is just destroy the enemy city center. We can pull back and defend ourselves now. Okay, now that that big rush is over, I can take things a little bit slower. Oh, and the Kunsen village gave us uh, six priests to show their support. Very good units. Priests are able to convert people, which makes them join your team after a while, and also bless people to increase the damage they deal. Stand ready. Stand ready. What is it? I understand. Certainly. Okay. There's our tiny little army so far. I guess I can finally get to explaining the game now. Let's get the guy in gold, even though you hardly use gold in Stone Age. Alright. So as you can already see, this game is very fast-paced, I guess I would say. Although it has a very slow feel to it. This is the maximum scroll speed, by the way, and I find it fairly slow. Uh... The game tends to have a pretty slow pace, unless you're on a small stage like this. Where you tend to have all different provinces, you're taking- you're micromanaging your economy a lot more than in a lot of these games. And it's really easy to get a ridiculous abundance of, an, of a certain resource. Because you're working with such big maps and you have so many citizens. I have no houses and my current population limit's 55. Mind you, I'm an Asian team, and Asian teams do have uh, a higher population limit. Instead of 40, they have 55. Um, from their city centers, that is. Uh, there are many different civilizations in the game. Each one has their own unique bonuses, and each nationality, or rather, what part of the world they come from, has its own bonuses and its own unique wonders. All Asian teams, for instance, or Far East, as it calls them, all Far East teams, they can support a bigger population from their, uh, their city centers. Uh, Korea specifically, uh, their units take 25% longer to convert from priest. So it? they have a stronger willpower, they're harder to basically b make betray. And all of our enemies are Korean too, by the way, in this, uh, in this match. Also, all Korean mounted, heavy mounted units deal 10% more damage. So when you're Korea, it's a good idea to support a very large uh, mounted cavalry force. Although, since we can't get to H2, we can't have a cavalry force. So we, we're going pretty good for resources. Our economy is actually starting to really boom. It's about time we get a workshop, which is O? Oh no, O is outpost. What was the hotkey for that again? M. M is for a workshop. Why? I don't know. But Workshop is where you get those stone throwers, so that's where we'll get our artillery for fighting buildings. And they're decent against grouped units, because it is area of effect attack. But they're very fast artillery. Also, Here. since I put this off too long, let's build a university, where we can garrison up to three civilians to start getting tech points. Tech points are these light bulbs. You spend them on the tech tree here. Or you can save them up after you have enough techs to go up an age. However, we're stuck in the Stone Age, so we're just going to be getting normal techs. You can also get tech at a slower rate at a temple, by garrisoning priests in a temple. So we're also going to do that. Since our economy is so good now, we can just afford to do that. And uh, it's about time that we get another city center, actually. So you go put away your resources, and... I'm just going to build one right here. Yep, get making units. Uh, I want two stone workshops. So get more people on stone over there. I just when I told a person to go down here. Whatever. I don't need all of you on tin. You hardly use tin. Let's get a city center right here. There are no real resources over here we want. I just want more city centers for the higher population, and uh, so I can make citizens faster. Although our economy is actually very good, I'm going to halt production on citizens. Normally you never really want to do that, just because uh, 
you never want to really stop your uh, your economy from getting stronger and stronger, or at least not for a very long time. Uh, in a stage this small, though, it's worth doing, just because you'll be able to support a much bigger army that way. I understand. So it is kind of worth it. Actually, I think I'm going to. Uh, I don't know. He gives off an aura, doesn't he? He does. So I do want him with the fight, so he can support them with his aura. Okay. I'll have to be careful about his health, though. Yeah, right now our only goal left over is to destroy the bandit city center. And they haven't been very aggressive, I've noticed. Alright, we're gonna have some techs really starting to come in now, between our buildings. Also, I think it's it? time to relocate the army. I want them up here. I don't want to attack the bandits head on because they have these walls and stuff. But this might be a good place for another city center. I don't feel like I really need it, but it could be nice. So let's put one right up there. No little bit of enemies right there. They're gonna try and convert that stone thrower. Nice little feature is when a unit's being converted, you can't attack it, so you won't accident accidentally weaken or what kill a unit you're trying to get. What is it? Next upgrade is, of course, Primitive Supply Caches, which gets your resource rate for basic resources up by 10%. Obviously very good. Also, we can get spies out of this uh, university if we so choose, but a spy in this age is not very useful. So I'm not really gonna bother. The there we go. And each province can only have so many of certain buildings. Actually, I want uh, three more people there. Uh, you can only get one university and I believe one temple per province? Yeah. Yes, one temple. So we can also get another university in another province right over here. Or another university in another temple over here to get our tech up even faster and over here. Let's make a university right there. What is it? What is it? Have them attack and move so we can hit them from behind. Also, let's get uh, all of these making their units over here. Closer to the front line. So we're doing pretty good here, actually. I need to keep an eye on the leader's health, though. And I want a temple up here. Uh, you two, I want to build temples in universities. Actually, we do need more people in stone. Maybe. We are running out of stone faster than anything else. You do need a lot of stone for a temple, though. It's just I want tech as fast as possible. What is it? I want to get more and more powerful during the assault. Go, getting more tech. Yes. This is off to a good start. What is it? And uh, seeing as they're hardly defending themselves, that's a pretty good indicator that uh, there's not a whole lot they're going to be able to do. I'm actually going to pull Tangun out of the rest of the army. I don't want to risk him dying. is going at a pretty alarmingly good rate right now. We should have it all maxed out very shortly. Ready. And we're stealing a lot of units, too. I want to pay some uh, resources to upgrade them. And I want you guys to attack from the south. And weather! That's another mechanic of this game. Oh god, the snow. It really obscures your vision. I don't remember entirely what it does, I believe it slows down your army, and I think it also hurts them, maybe weaken them, something along those lines. 
So we're attacking on both fronts here. I think the bandits are thoroughly screwed. We just need to take out their capital. Also, we got the economic crown. There's imperial crown, economic crown, and military crown. Every once in a while it basically calls for a vote to see who's got the highest score in that. Uh, and uh, whoever has the highest, it gives the crown for a while. They get a unique leader who's very powerful in combat, and it also lets you select a power. I like war economy. It makes it so all of your military units you get cost less and take less time to build until you lose the crown. So that's obviously my favorite one. To be able to quickly and cheaply make an army is probably the most important thing. And as you can see here, we are vastly outnumbering the enemies. Although, I can hardly see it. Let's just attack and move up there. And have you attack and move to back them up. Alright, and the snow looks like it's dying down a bit now. Now, is there any place where I haven't put the priests in yet? There. Alright. I think we have thoroughly beat this one. Oh, there's a big army down there. Take out the barracks, good. It's one down. I think we've pretty solidly got this in the bag. What is it? You're almost healed up. Tech points are still going up. Let's just spend all that on more health research. And there's their bandit camp, which is their tar which is the target. Let's just focus all units on that camp. Take it down quicker that way. All right, we're gonna get maxed out tech. You can't research more than one thing at a time, by the way, this is just queuing them up. Man, we're getting tech points fast. And I think they're just mostly trying to build citizens to try and get their economy back up. But I think it's a little too late for them to fix their economy. There we go. Every single technology is queued up. And we got the Imperial Crown. Uh, I would like to take... Uh, personally, what do I like most? I like... Expansionism is nice during a war. It increases your population capacity. Or resistant to damage. So centralization is nice. Fanaticism, I'm not so big on. Immune to conversion for a while. I would prefer missionaries. Which is, uh... Priests are basically better. Units and buildings restore health. Uh, do so at an increased rate for the duration of the effect. Think Tank is very nice. I prefer to do this most of the time. Increases the speed at which you get technology points, but that doesn't really have use for us right now. So I think what I'll take is... Mm, exploration. Actually, no, that's for C units only. Uh, drills. No. Let's get my population up. My population's now at a ridiculous, uh, <laughs> I know a ridiculous max population, so there's no way I'm gonna get supply blocked. Uh, for any of you who don't know what supply blocking is, wow, military crown. Supply blocking is when you have run out of space for units, and you need to, uh, build more buildings to get more, like, houses. Infantry does more damage. What would be, uh, artillery? Artillery have more hit points and do more damage. I want that because I'm just taking out this building. Alright, so that's how you very quickly and effectively beat the first stage, although there were some close calls, and this is only normal difficulties. This game is kind of brutally difficult with the campaign. But that's the first Korean stage in the bag. I hope I explained things well on exactly how you play this game. Uh, I hope you guys get an understanding. I know it was kind of rushed, and I know this is not a very easy game to just pick up and learn. But I think you'll get the hang of it more as this goes along if you don't already understand from this. 
And I believe there's a cutscene that plays this out. Dangon has created a safe haven for people to call their own. This is but the first step in a long and difficult journey. From these humble beginnings, a mighty nation can now rise. A nation that will offer peace and prosperity for all. All right, we've won. Now, if we want, we can examine the map, where it just shows us it with uh, nothing in the way. Oh, there's a gold mine over there. I don't really need that. Gold is fairly useless uh, in Stone Age. I don't know if you use it for anything, actually. Oh, no, use it for some things. I think universities, maybe? Buying spies? That could be it. Maybe priests, too. But for this whole stage, one guy on gold is enough. As you can see, it's really not that big a stage. It's a five-province stage, and one province hardly counts. Unless this is a province too, which I doubt it is. I'm pretty sure this is inaccessible. Although, I believe we can build docks. That's it for this stage, then. Continue. Yes. So we get to see our score and everything. Nothing particularly interesting here. They're fun to look at when you're not really in the campaign. Alright, on the next episode, we're skipping forwards all the way to 900 BCE. Until next time, this has been The Drybread. Have a nice day.